in the name of the one who sustains, renews, and always pursues us. Amen. You are surviving this pandemic. I say this out loud because we are all carrying the exhaustion of this time, but you have remained grounded in the hope of our Lord. And you have been called to this moment for such a time as this. I begin today's sermon in this way because I know the pain and the grief and the exhaustion within our community. And we know that our faith does not promise the end of exhaustion or the absence of suffering. In fact, we know that suffering and difficulty is what it means to pick up our crosses and to follow Jesus. Our worship, our time together on this morning, I hope is a reminder that God's strength and God's courage are yours. God's redeeming and healing love is yours. Epiphany is a season of seeing how God is made manifest within our lives. And we are called to follow Jesus, to endure, to persevere, and to remain faithful in the circumstances. I want to lift up our two readings from scripture this morning, the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51 and the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Each year, the lectionary takes its basis out of one of the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And they're called synoptic because they can be seen together as broadly similar in so many ways. And throughout the readings out of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we have weaved through them the passages from John at key points along the way. This week's gospel reading, which is Jesus's first call to his disciples, is one of those passages out of John. And we'll hear Mark's version of the same events in next week's gospel. And likewise, our reading out of the first book of Samuel is also on the same theme of Jesus's call and discerning God's call. For the gospel reading, it may be helpful to begin the reading, then begin the passage a few verses earlier, beginning at verse 35. This earliest start has a couple of advantages. It gives us a better sense of the flow of the narrative. And we also, in the earlier passage, get to see and hear Andrew's response and his reaction to Jesus's call. And it helps fill out the full range of different responses the disciples had to Jesus. And in verse 39, which is just outside of our gospel reading for this morning, we hear Jesus's invitation to come and see. The same one, Philip, echoes in verse 46 that is within our pericope this morning. Now, the story of Samuel and Samuel's call is a classic And alongside John's story of Jesus calling his disciples, it opens for us an opportunity to reflect on the theme of vocation and life's purpose. And what better time of year than in early January in this first month of the new year with the air full of New Year's resolutions And at the same time, in this time of national and global turmoil, when the air is full 
of disorientation and tension. This theme of calling and vocation will be with us for the next two weeks, for this week and next week, because next week's gospel is Mark's passage of the same theme. And next week's Old Testament reading is the call of Jonah. So what are these scriptures saying to us now in this year of 2021? In our first lesson, Samuel is just a boy. In fact, traditionally, he's imagined to be about 12 years old in this scene that we hear. And a priest apprentice is what he does, and he sleeps in the temple near the Ark of God, the most sacred object in all of Israelite worship. Four times, God calls Samuel And the first three times, Samuel mistakes God's voice for Eli's. And so he runs to the priest to see what's the matter. And Eli's eventual advice is to stay, to stay put for the fourth time and to respond to the voice, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Right alongside that, in the gospel reading from the gospel of John, as John tells it, Andrew decides to follow Jesus after both John the Baptist's endorsement and spending a full day with Jesus in his home. Philip's decision, on the other hand, is a direct and immediate response to Jesus' simple summons of come and follow me. Nathaniel in this passage is the skeptical one. And he's skeptic at first, and he decides only to sign on after Jesus impresses him with apparently a knowledge that he had no idea he could know and a knowledge about Nathaniel himself. What's significant about all of these accounts from these three different disciples is that in the gospel of John, John paints a portrait of discipleship that arises out of various circumstances in various ways and among people with various temperaments and personalities. In fact, Nathaniel is the one who has one of the most infamous lines out of the disciples, can anything good come out of Nazareth. When faced with Nathaniel's skepticism, Philip makes no argument. Rather, he simply says, come and see, echoing Jesus's earlier invitation to Andrew. The power of firsthand experience appears to supersede arguments and promises and declarations for both Jesus and for Philip. Come and see is their signature mode of spreading the good news of Jesus Christ and for recruiting followers. Come and see. I'm also struck by Nathaniel's change of heart and ultimate testimony that Jesus is the king of Israel. And that phrase should strike a chord within us. For the king of Israel foreshadows Pilate's sign that would be on the cross at the end of John's gospel, where Pilate pronounces Jesus the king of the Jews. The two titles function as bookends in the narrative of John's gospel. And for listeners who know the end of the story, Nathaniel's words are this interesting, poignant mix of both celebration and sorrow. The call to follow Jesus is a call toward difficulty, toward turmoil, toward suffering, and not away from it. 
And so the wisdom of these two readings upon our lives is to think about what God's call means for us. And we often think of God's call as answering the question, what are we to do with our lives? What should we do with this life, this gift that God has given us? And that question is both poetic and overwhelming. But these lessons of scripture reveal that God's call can also be about something different, something smaller, something as basic as getting our bearings, especially in times of crisis and disorientation. And I use that word disorientation purposefully because that word disorient comes from orient, orientation, and that's from the Latin root of the word east, to orient, east, the direction of the rising sun. And for Europeans and North Africans, east was the direction of the Holy Land. And in times of turmoil and disorientation, God reorients us, bringing us back to what's truly most important. God's call on our lives can be something as simple as facing the sun and allowing our lives to know that weeping may endure for the night, but joy and hope and a brand new day comes in the morning. The calling story in John's gospel reveals that God's calling meets us right where we are. And isn't that the same as the sunrise? The sun rises independent of our feelings about it. In the gospel, Andrew gets a trusted recommendation and a day with Jesus. Philip jumps aboard right away and Nathaniel engages in skepticism. There's no right way to respond to God's call. There is plenty of room under God's tent and the tent of discipleship, both for those who are ready to take the plunge and for those who wish to put their toe in first to see the temperature of the water. We are then left with Jesus's words and Philip's echo of them. Come and see. This is both a witness and a challenge. Come and see. For both Andrew and Nathaniel and for us, secondhand reports won't cut it. We want and we need to come and see for ourselves. One of the amazing things about this pandemic is that when we come on the other side of this, we each will be able to preach sermons of faithfulness and God's enduring hope within our lives, not by hearsay, but by firsthand experience. Come and see. This is how the good news is shared. This is how communities of faith grow. This is how disciples are nourished in the faith. And this is how St. Luke's has been able to remain strong 130 years and will have another 130 years and more ahead of us. On February 14th, next month, we, the people of St. Luke's, will have our 131st annual meeting. This gathering is an opportunity for us to do the business of the church, to elect new vestry members, to recognize leaders in our community who are transitioning into other modes of leadership, and to be able to give thanks to God for this body of Christ and to vision together who God is calling us to be. 
And here's the question that is taken out of our gospel for this morning for each of us to consider both individually and communally as the church of St. Luke's. If we were to invite a friend to experience the best of our church, the best of our congregation's life and work with this simple three word invitation, come and see, to what specifically would we be inviting them to? Come and see, what would we be inviting them to? Would it be a worship service? Would it be a service project? Would it be a virtual coffee hour gathering? What would it be? That is our discernment in this journey of being the church. Where and when do we, the people of God, most vividly proclaim the good news of God? When and where do we proclaim the gospel? Come and see. Amen.